As you guys know, I really wanted to get this thing out on the road for a test ride, but unfortunately I ran out of time and I also needed some connectors as well as making some battery cables. And not just any cables, I need some pretty heavy duty ones. This is 4 gauge wire and I need 4 of them essentially making 2 cables. As you know with this giant battery, I'm going to be pushing a ton of power through here and I didn't want to skimp on the cables because I didn't want to overheat them, possibly cause a fire and it's always better to have more headroom in your cables than you need so that's what I'm doing here. These are Anderson 150 connectors and they should be capable of handling up to 150 amps of power. Because I'm pushing more than 200 amps I can't rely on one of these singly so I'm going to put two of them on and connect those to the battery. I probably could have cut corners and just slapped some smaller cables together for a test ride because I'm not going to be outputting the full amount of power just for testing. I figured instead of just rushing and making some crappy cable that I have to remake later anyway, I might as well just take my time and make some really nice cables right off the bat. These ring terminals are the weakest link in the chain, so if there are any issues, it's going to fail right here, which I'm okay with, and if that is the case, then I will beef those up, but I think we'll be okay. These ring terminals are also a bit too wide for the controller, so I have to do a slight modification on all of them to get them to fit. I'm making these cables entirely out of parts I already had laying around from other projects, which is why I have to modify them. This part is probably completely unnecessary, but whenever I build cables, I tend to overbuild them and that includes soldering because I loathe a intermittent connection and sometimes the crimps just don't work as well as you want them to. I am trying to make these cables as safe as possible because there is a ton of power going through them and I don't want them shorting out the battery or shorting out myself. Although these connectors are very expensive and pretty bulky, they are very well made and easy to assemble. I double, triple, and quadruple check the polarity just to make sure I have the red going to the plus and the black going to the negative. I definitely did not want to do any kind of reverse polarity action happening right here. It did take me a bit to fully complete both of these cables, but I think they turned out looking pretty good. With these power cables done, I can now supply power from the battery to the controller and we're one step closer to test riding this bike. I have two more things to fix and that is because the throttle and brake cables came from a different kit and thankfully I have built a ton of e-bikes over the years and have accumulated a massive amount of extra parts. Thankfully I was able to source some connectors from these old parts that will connect up to the new controller. This two pin connector will allow me to disable the motor while I'm braking but also enable regenerative braking. I didn't have any other throttle cables, but thankfully this pass sensor, which is the pedal assist sensor, also has the same connector for the throttle, it just uses different wire colors. Off camera, I did have a frustrating time trying to figure out the three different wire colors for the throttle because I basically had three sets of colors and I didn't know which lined up with which. Unfortunately, this job, which should have only taken about two minutes, ended up taking me about 45 minutes, but I did figure it out and I got it working. Because even for a test ride, I don't want to be sitting directly on the metal, I am using some foam that I got from these wrist pads that are like for a computer at your desk. This is probably going to be the foam that I use to cover the pad and I'm just testing it out at this point. I might double it up, but I won't know until I actually ride the bike for a bit. Here's a pro tip for you guys. If you are putting stuff on your handlebars like these display, they always come with these captive nuts that always just fly out of here whenever you're trying to install them or take them off. All you have to do is just drop a few drops of super glue and then you don't have to worry about it anymore. And here's the bike all wired up temporarily because of course I'm not going to have all these giant wires and connectors coming out of the frame but since I don't have a hole big enough in the underside of the frame yet this is the only way I can connect up the battery. 
I got my brake, my throttle, my seat pad, and I'm pretty much ready to go on the first test ride and I was very excited to get to this point because it is a pretty big milestone. I haven't ridden this bike since its last iteration which was about three or four years ago and I'm super excited to feel how the new power feels because I did upgrade this quite a bit. Aside from my little detour of figuring out the throttle and taking some time on that, when I eventually connected everything together it all worked. And now with everything working and together I could take it out and finally give it a test ride. I did go on quite a few test rides mostly because I just really enjoyed riding the bike. My first impressions were just that it is an absolute blast and it is super comfortable surprisingly. I was in no way pushing it to its limit or trying to go the absolute top speed or anything like that. That wasn't the purpose of this test ride. However, I will do a top speed run later on when this build is completed in the final episode so stay tuned for that. The main purpose was first just making sure all all the systems worked and there wasn't any glaring issues that I needed to address now instead of later when the build is all painted and looking good. And secondly, almost most importantly, is the ergonomics. Did I actually get the seat position correctly? Does it need to be changed in any way? Because now is the time to change it if I do. Surprisingly, I pretty much nailed it. I know that I sat on it a few times, but there's a big difference between just sitting on a bike and actually riding it. The seat with only one layer of foam is actually actually surprisingly comfortable and I feel like the rider position couldn't really be better. There are only two minor changes I want to make to the seat or the seat position but I'll get into those after the test ride. At this point I don't want to go too in depth on the riding but I will say that this bike is insanely fast. This thing is an absolute monster. Even on power level 2 out of 5 I was going over 30 miles per hour and this thing is just absolutely crazily scary fast. One of the minor things that I did want to change was how I designed the seat pan to flare out at the ends. As you can see when I'm standing up they do tend to cut into my leg a little bit and it's just minorly uncomfortable so I wanted to see if I could tweak those a little bit to get them to be a little more comfortable. It's completely fine when you're actually sitting on the bike and riding it's only when you're standing over it and maneuvering like that but I figured I could still retain the aesthetics mostly and just tweak it a little bit so I did that for both sides. Another thing that I did want to add which I was already starting to add in the last episode was filling out this middle section here. To me there was just too much of a separation between the seat and the frame and I wanted to see if I could design a way to kind of take up that negative space. I do like the skeletal look so I wanted to kind of keep that aesthetic but also kind of fill it out and make it look a little more like one cohesive unit. I did try to go a bit faster on my fabrication on these parts because they're not really critical for structure. They're more of just an aesthetic look. I'm sure that they will add some rigidity but that wasn't really the main focus of these parts. It's more of just trying to make it look better. I'm definitely getting a bit faster with making this parts which is just coming from experience. I don't know if I'm getting any better but I'm definitely getting faster at it which I guess is one metric for progression. Even moving more quickly it did take me quite a bit of time and I finally retired my old gloves I had been using and my cutoff wheel was finally burned out so I just replaced both those and then continued on with making the other side of these more angled pieces. I did try my best to get them as symmetrical as possible but they're all pretty much one off and I had to kind of grind and get them all in the right position and there are a little bit more gaps than I would like but I finally got all the pieces that I need to weld on here and I think it actually looks pretty cool. Now that we have all these pieces cut and pretty much mocked up in the places they're going to be we do have to weld them to the frame. I'm sure you guys remember from the last episode that I missed one of the holes because I had cut that piece a little too small but I finally got a piece that fits in there and I was able to round out the entire front end and get this fully welded up. I'm definitely getting better at welding even though my welds are nothing to write home about at all but I am just getting better at tacking things and holding things, fixturing and all that which is a really big part of welding. 
The next thing I really need to work on in terms of my welding is getting more proficient at kind of filling gaps and holes. Right now it's kind of hit or miss. Sometimes I can get it really good and other times I end up kind of burning away more material than I'm adding. There's kind of two small areas on these extra pieces where there was quite a more significant gap and I was having some trouble trying to reach and bridge the gap but I'll keep working at it until I can get a solid form. And here it is after blasting everything together and yes the welds are nothing to write home about they don't look very good but the metal is stuck together so I'm happy with that. I might try to hit those inside joints just for the practice but again these pieces are more just for looks and I think it's actually looking pretty cool and it does fill out that space pretty well. The other minor thing that I learned on my test ride that I do want to change is maybe adding an inch or two to the end of the seat. As it is, it's very comfortable and I could totally leave it and it would be fine, but I just figured if I do want to make it more perfect, this is what I would add. Not only is this going to be more comfortable, but I do think it is going to add an aesthetic appeal because there was just so much mass going on in the center of the frame that the rear wheel was just a bit detached or untethered from the rest of the mass of the entire bike. There is a fine line though because if I'm adding a ton more length to the seat to me that starts detracting and messing with the proportions. Right now it's a little too squashed. If I made the seat very long then it would look a little too stretched out. So to me this was the middle ground of finding the best balance. Because I'm pretty much done now with the front end of this frame, all the holes are filled so I can actually make them a lot flatter and smoother and they're definitely gonna look a lot better. At this point, I pretty much disassembled the bike entirely again, and this gives me access to some of the frame mods that I wanna do. One of them is making an access hole for all those controller wires. And I'm fixing a mistake I made in the last episode, and that is moving the controller back because I need as much room as possible for all that wiring, the phase wires at the front of the frame. I will be doing more frame mods in the next episode, although I am debating if I wanna use that controller cover that I showed you guys in the last episode or if I want to make one out of acrylic. I still am on the fence about it. It's really just to protect the controller. It doesn't have to be made out of metal. It'd probably actually be lighter if it was plastic so I might just go with that. It might be easier to make as well. Now I just got to stick these flaps on the end of the seat to elongate it and after that it should be good. I do have to do quite a bit of cleanup after I weld on because I need to add some more welds here and there. So this part is not finished but we're getting desperately close to the end of it. The next main thing I do need to be thinking about are the side panels for the frame. So I don't know if I want to do a metal design, if I want to make them out of acrylic. I'm not sure at this point. If you guys have any suggestions please let me know and I will strongly consider them. And here's how things are looking so far. I do need to work on the end flaps a little bit. I need to trim them to be more symmetrical. I do need to add some more weld, but right now they're at least on there. I definitely still have some welding to do as well as cleaning everything up with the grinder later, but I'm pretty happy with how these extra little accent pieces are coming out and I think this thing is just looking better and better. Unfortunately, that's all the time I had for this week and I want to thank you guys so much for watching all the way to the end. I really appreciate it. I can't wait to show you guys even more progress on this build, so stay tuned and I'll see you in the next one.